In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a click to flip interaction inside Adobe Captivate. So this video today is kind of inspired by a video I did some time ago where I used a series of effects to create a baseball card flipping effect. So essentially we're starting with one view and then spinning it around and showing you another view. And this was simply done on the timeline. It wasn't anything that interactive. Today I'm going to show you how you can have a flip effect when you click particular items on your screen here. So as you can see in this project, I've created a bunch of objects. These are simply shapes used as buttons to represent the four stages of competence. Now in this first example here, I'll just show you what the alternate state looks like. These are multi-state objects. So uh, when I click on them, my intention is to reveal this click state where you can learn a little bit more about this particular stage. Now for this, we're going to need uh, several advanced actions, one for each of the clickable objects here. So we're going to go into our project drop down menu and select advanced actions. Now we'll call the first one stage one. And the very first thing we need to do is apply the effect uh, that we wish to use in this case. So there is actually a command called apply effect. And then I choose the object that I'm going to be applying it to. In this case here, it is this button one that you see here. And we can choose the effect very similar to what the effects are in your timing panel. In this example, I'm going to use an exit effect and I'm going to use collapse across. This will create the effect of the object closing in on itself, which should look like we're flipping it around. When I choose that, I can also choose the parameters for that effect by clicking on the three dot icon here. In this case, two seconds is too long, so I'm going to set that to be 0.3 seconds. And I'm going to increase the ease effect to 100% and click OK. Now, anytime you use effects in Adobe Captivate, you need to account for the time needed to display those effects. So the very first thing I'm going to do after applying this effect is to delay the next action that I'm about to run by the same number of seconds, or in this case, 0.3 seconds. Now what I want to do is change the state of button one to this new click state. Now, if learners have already pressed one of the other items, I want to return those back to the normal state. So we're going to change the state of button two back to normal, change the state of button three back to normal, and change the state of button four back to normal. Now at this point, I'm going to run another effect, and this is going to be the opposite of collapse across, and this will be an entrance effect. So we'll choose apply effect, Again to button one, we'll select the effect and this time choose the entrance version of stretch across, which is the opposite of collapse across. Like before, we need to set the parameters 0.3 seconds and we'll use the ease effect at 100%. Click OK. No need to include a delay next action by 0.3 seconds because of course, this is the last action in this particular advanced action. So we're basically done here. I'm going to save this as an action, click OK, and we need to recreate the same advanced action, but for the other three buttons on this slide. So we're going to use the duplicate action command up here in the upper right hand corner. I'll click on that. It will make a copy of stage one, and we'll just relabel that to be stage two. All we need to do is change the objects in question here. So we're going to be working now with button two. The same collapse across effect is fine. We're going to change the button one back to normal and button two will now be in its clicked state. 
and we'll make sure that we're again working with button two down at the closing effect here. Let's update that action, click OK, and we'll duplicate it two more times. And this will be for stage three. So we're working with button three. We'll make sure button two goes back to normal and button three is now clicked and make sure that we're working with button three down below here. Update this action, click OK, and duplicate it one final time here. So stage four, again, we're working with button four. Let's make sure that we return button three to normal and button four to clicked and make sure we're applying the effects to button four. So I think we're good to go here. We'll update this action, click OK, click Close. And now we wanna make sure that we are setting up our advanced actions to run with the appropriate button here. So I'm gonna select them all, go to our Actions tab, and change the on success action from the default of go to next slide to execute advanced actions. It should by default choose one of my scripts, this one being the first one here. And I just need to change button two to be pointing at stage two script, button three at stage three script, and button four at stage four script. So I think we're good to go here. Let's preview this in HTML5 and make sure it works as expected. So here we go. Here's our four stages of competence. Let's click on the first one. Very cool. Number two. And of course, I like that it returns the original one back to normal. Button three. And button four. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.